Hey guys, AB here, and welcome to another episode of AB in the Films. Um, if you guys watch Heavy Duty, you'll know, well, first of all, I should point out why this light is on behind me. I usually don't have this light on. Uh, it's because I'm in the middle of doing my homework, and uh, I don't feel like doing my homework right now because I got six days left of school. So, uh, I'm going to do this review just to procrastinate a little bit more, and hopefully I'll get back to the homework. Okay, um... I want to talk to you guys about uh, a film I have just recently seen, uh, but I haven't seen it in a, in a long time. I've seen it before, but I haven't seen it in a while. Okay. Um, if you guys have seen Heavy Duty, uh, you'll know, if you've been on the website of heavyduty.com, you know that uh, I have been really depressed lately. Uh, I lost my house back in uh, late September. We moved away from Marlton, and it was hard to... Uh, cope with that. Um, but, uh, you know, I've actually, I've grown to adjust to that, but I've just been really depressed lately. I haven't been, I, I didn't want to tell anybody, I haven't been showing signs of it, but uh, it feels good coming out with uh, all my uh, stress and uh, sadness. Um, but recently, and I think it all began with me pulling this movie out and watching it, it brought back a lot of good memories I had back in middle, back when I went to middle school. And um, I'm starting to do everything I used to do um, that I haven't done in seven, what, seven or eight months. Um, I've been listening to Beatle music again. I've been playing my guitar. My guitar has been on the, it's been hanging up on the wall since we moved. It's been hanging up there for seven months. I just took it down last night. It was covered in dust and it was so out of tune. And I, oh my God, I, I can't even tell you how long it took me to tune that back up. But um, I'm feeling a lot better, you know, and I think it's probably because I'm, getting out of school, you know, because school's coming to an end, which is pretty cool. And uh, we start shooting season three of Heavy Duty in less than three weeks, so that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, that's going to air this fall, in case you guys are wondering. I don't want to give too much away during the summer. But uh, you'll get updates on that. But anyway, on to this movie. I was going through uh, some DVDs I have, because you know me, I'm a huge movie nerd. I have a lot of DVDs, a lot of movies, and a lot of TV shows as well. But, um, uh... I was going through some DVDs, and I started looking through them, and I'm like, you know, I have, I've seen these movies so many times. What is something new and different that I can watch? Something I haven't seen in a long time. And then I always say, oh, I'm kidding myself. I've seen every one of these movies. I, I know the script of every one of these movies. That's how well I know these. And um, I have like three rows of DVDs, and I went to the third row, and I found this movie that I haven't seen in a long time. And uh, the name of the movie is Little Manhattan. And um, I've never told anyone this, but this movie has been a treasure to me for a long time. I think ever since it came out. Um, I recently watched it. I, I am. I don't know why. I don't. I, I just don't know why this wasn't on my top twenty favorite film f favorite movies list that I did back in January. Um, because it is such a huge part of my childhood. And I just love watching it because it brings back all those memories I had when I was a, when I was younger. Um, but, let, but let me talk a little bit about this movie. Uh, if you guys don't know this movie, uh, you know it. You know it's actually not your fault that you don't know about this movie because I found because I found about I found out about this movie completely by accident. I, I heard about it over the internet when it came out. Um, and this is a kids movie. And I don't remember seeing any... Because here's the deal. This came out in 2005. I was 12. So I was still watching Nickelodeon at that time. And I don't remember seeing any TV spots, any trailers, nothing on Nickelodeon or any commercials off of any channels. I don't remember seeing the trailer for this movie in the theaters during any of the kids' movies of whatever came out that year. I I never heard of it. It was this little unknown movie, and it's not an independent movie. It's not. It's from 20th Century Fox, you know? You know some of these actors. Um, uh, Josh Hutcherson is in the movie from The Hunger Games. Um, a very young Josh Hutcherson, to be, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, I found out about this movie over the, over the internet, and it's very special to me, this movie, because, well, I'm going to come out and say this. When this movie came out... Um, first of all, this movie is about a kid who is at the age of, um, I think 11 years old or 12 years old or going through that teenage time when, uh, he has his first love. And that was happening to me. That happened to me the same time this movie came out. And that was a huge 
thing to look at and look forward to seeing this movie because I saw the trailer for this. Now, let me tell you where I first saw this, okay? Uh, this was 2005, so YouTube wasn't that popular yet. Um, I didn't hear of YouTube until I saw um, Bleep in a Box from SNL, which was like a year later. So the way I got trailers and movie information was on yahoomovies.com, and I think that website still exists. I haven't been on it in a long time. But uh, that's how I saw movies and clips and trailers and, you know, stuff that was new in the theaters. And I clicked something by accident, and this trailer came up for the movie Little Manhattan. And I think by 10 seconds into this trailer, my jaw unhinged. And I was like, oh my god, I gotta see this movie. What is in this movie? I gotta see this. Because I could relate to that movie. Because it was happening to me at the same time. And it was really kind of like a shocker. That, that they would make a movie about this topic, because this is something you hardly ever see. The only time I think I've ever heard of um, a boy and a girl having their first love is, I think, in The Wonder Years. And I mean taken seriously. I haven't seen something like that since The Wonder Years. And um, the reason why I compare it to The Wonder Years is because the movie is told from Josh Hutcherson's point of view. The Wonder Years. Okay? Um, but the difference is, uh, it's not... Uh, it's not told from... Well, I'm going to be all over. I'm all over the place with this. Uh, the movie actually has Josh Hutcherson as a kid, and he narrates the movie, but not as an adult. He narrates it by what he's thinking in his mind. And again, that was something I could relate to, because the things he says in the movie when he narrates the film, I was thinking the same thing in my head. Well, it's not everything, but some of the things. And I could relate to this movie on so many levels, but uh, I digress. Um, here's what happens in the movie. Uh, Gabe, who is Josh Hutcherson, he uh, has this friend of his, Rosemary, played by Charlie Ray. And she's actually a very good actress in this movie. I don't know why she hasn't done any other movies. This is the only... I looked her up on IMDb. This is the only film she's done. Um, but uh, anyway, he and, um, he and her are... like they, They've been the best friends ever since they were like toddlers. But now... They're getting older, and they're like, I don't know, 11, 12, 13 years old. And Josh Hutcherson starts to see her in this different light. And he's starting to see the real her, and he starts to have feelings for her. And for the next two weeks, because that's how long the movie is expanded over, two weeks, he doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to tell her. And he can't tell anybody. He doesn't tell anybody except his parents. Again, I can relate to that, because no one knew about it except my parents. But, well, and in the beginning, when it came to my uh, situation. But, um, uh, y y you know, and it, and it was basically all these things that I think that boys were thinking when they go through their first love, because I was thinking most of, the, most of these things. And, you know, and, and he, he, he goes on this date with her. He considers it a date, but it's not really a date, you know, again. Um, but, you know, it's such a great movie, and... Watching it now, in retrospect, it's actually even more... I think the movie might be a little bit better than I remember it to be when I first saw it. Now, uh, here's what I really love about the movie, after seeing it again. What I deeply love about this movie is not just the references of uh, what, happened, what happened to me and me uh, looking at myself in this movie, because that's what I did. I... I I pretended it was me and the girl I liked at the time in this movie. But um, I don't see that anymore, obviously, because I, you know, I got older. But what I love about this movie, and I always did ever since I first saw the film, uh, was the last ten minutes of the movie, where Gabe, who is Josh Hutcherson's name in the movie, um, he finds out that uh, Rosemary is going away to camp. So she's going to be away for the rest of the summer. And... He wants to tell her how he feels, you know? So he goes over to this this wedding or something, because she's the flower girl in this uh, in, in her aunt's wedding or something like that. I forget. But uh, he goes over there and he tells her he, he tells her how he feels. And she, again, much like Hollywood would do, because Hollywood would have her love him back. Um, she doesn't love him. I'm not going to give any spoilers. I'm trying not to give any spoilers away, but there are some spoilers here. She doesn't love him back. She doesn't know how to feel. And when I saw that for the first time, I was like, 
that's the way it's gonna be. That's the way love is. And that's exactly how it is. That is exactly what happens sometimes. The person that you love might not love you back. And when I say love, I'm talking like your first love. You know, when you're a kid, you love her. Oh, I'm in love with her, I'm in love with her. No, you're not. You're just experiencing it for the first time. You really don't. Um, but uh, I love that. And I love the fact that he finally accepts the fact that they are on different roads in life. He, you know, like, things, were, things are going to change. You're going to get older. You're going to like different girls. And I especially, now that I'm older, I especially love the last maybe 40 seconds of, of the movie when they have that Beatles song playing and they have uh, a montage of them. And what Gabe says is so true looking back at it now, because when I first saw this movie, um, my first love was still happening, but now that it's over and it's years later, it's interesting watching that again, and he's absolutely right. And the thing about that is, I don't think that kids, like, here's the deal. This movie is a perfect example of what a family film is. This is not just for kids, this is for adults too. Because the kids in the movie, they don't act like kids. They, here's the deal. They're actually very good actors. They, they act very mature for their age in this movie. Um, sometimes they act immature, but they're kids. You know, they can't be mature all the time. Um, now, here's the problem with this movie, because I'm recommending you guys to watch this. Uh, if you guys had a first love at that age, especially guys, guys will definitely probably relate to this movie a little bit more than girls because it's told through Gabe's point of view, which is why I related it to it. I related to it a lot more, but the thing with this movie is, even when I was a kid, I, I knew this. I'm not realizing this now. Uh, there are a couple of moments in this movie. Now, I love this movie. Like, seriously, if I hadn't have overlooked this when I did the top 20 review, this would probably be number seven on the list. Um, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Maybe it would be, like, number nine on the list. But um, there are a couple of scenes in this movie under 40 seconds long, some scenes, when you watch them and you say to yourself, really? Like, you had to put that on film? Did that have to be in the movie? Like, the movie couldn't work if that scene wasn't in the movie. And I know if you guys tune in to see this movie, you'll know exactly what scenes I'm talking about. Most of these scenes happen in the very, like, I think the first five minutes of the movie. And a couple will come on throughout the rest of the movie. But that's just like 5% of the film. The other 95% is great. I love the acting in this movie. I love the pacing in this movie. I, I just love this movie. And I could so relate to this because it came out the same time I was going through that. Okay, now I'm just repeating myself. But um, anyway, uh, if you guys know me, uh, you're probably going to want to check out this movie immediately because you're probably going to wonder about this. Um, first of all, uh, this movie is not on Netflix. I don't think it's on Netflix. I tried looking for it on Netflix. Uh, if you have it on DVD, you know about this movie. Um, I think, here's how you can see it. If you want to see this movie, it's on YouTube. Um, it's under one video. The whole movie's in one video. Uh, just type in Little Manhattan 2005 full movie and click the video that says one hour and 30 minutes. It, the, the whole movie's in one video. And I really, really... I just love this movie. I think it's really good. Um, like I said, there are some times, particularly in the beginning, you're going to say to yourself, oh my God, like really, that's in the movie? Let, like this is the movie he recommended to us. But um, but no, let, like give it a minute to go on because most of the things that happen in this movie happen to me. Not everything, but most of it. Like I'd say 50% from the narration in his mind to some of the things he does with with the girl that he likes. It's just a really, really good movie. And I, I love the last 10 minutes of the movie. From, from the moment where he realizes he has to tell her how he feels until the end credits. I love that whole, I think it's 10 minutes long. I just love that. Um, okay, I've talked about this movie long enough. I, I hope you guys give this a viewing. Uh, you guys might get a kick out of this if you've known me for if you've known me since middle school. You might get a kick out of seeing this movie because uh, you'll probably know what I was feeling at the time. Um, so uh, yeah, that's all I got to say. And uh, hopefully, when I do another episode, I'll see a movie that's in theaters and tell you whether or not that's worth seeing. I hope you see this one. Take care, guys.